Also, I want to put a disclaimer out real quick that anybody can go on CJD's Chambers docket. From celebrities, to murderers, to rapists, to thieves, to liars, to drunks, to hoes, to bitches, and motherfuckers that, you know, just they just out of order, okay? So I just feel like I need to put that disclaimer out real quick because there's some um, cases on the docket. Y'all motherfuckers deserve to be on the docket, bitch. I'm finna roast y'all ass down to the ground. My phone agrees. Hey y'all, welcome back to see that these chambers game. This is the case of Cracker Clump hating on nigga but he love. Let's go to motherfucker. Word at the buffet. Ian the white Sherman Clump, the dumb one, not the scientifically smart African American. <laughs> Eddie Murphy played. <laughs> Has been charged with the murder of Barry Washington Jr. Let's be going to motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> Police arrested Ian Clumpy by the McKenzie at his raggedy ass home in Redmond, Oregon. Soon after, a grand jury returned with an indictment on six charges second degree murder, first and second degree manslaughter, first degree assault, and two counts of unlawful use of a deadly weapon. Did they charge him for being a sloppy, racist pig, smelling ass bastard that's hating on my fine ass African American brother? <laughs> Barry Washington was unarmed at the time of his death. The two men did not know each other until the night of the shooting when Barry approached his girlfriend, Allison Butler. First of all, to approach a female named Allison Butler, <sighs> y'all already know any man besides myself will seduce or submit to anything that meets a certain desire and or willing to pay for that dick.
What's happening, YouTube fam? It's your boy Drizzle. It's your boy Drizzle. Boy Drizzle. It's your boy Drizzle. China, baby, y'all, let's get this at these prayers. Let's go. I'm starving. And we got a lot to talk about. Christ, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this food I'm about to receive. Maybe noise to my mind, body, and soul. In Christ Jesus' name, yes, I do pray. Amen. Let me eat first, y'all. Now. Hold on, let me do a little ASMR real quick, we, then we'll talk. Child, that's enough for all the ASMR. I gotta talk to y'all, girl. Child, the reason why I've been gone for so long. Bleh. Excuse me. Y'all remember that car I recently um, bought? For those of y'all that watch my videos. Take a look at this clip. 
Hold on, y'all. I want to show y'all how hard this bitch hit my motherfucking car. Now, y'all see the parking spot. This bitch pushed my car up on the goddamn curb, bitch. Y'all see that? Let me see if I can step on the other side so y'all can see the actual damage this bitch done did. Look at my trunk. It's supposed to be closed. Look at that. That don't work. My dough jam. Well, shit. I don't want to open it because it's hard to close the fuck bike. Y'all see how she hit my shit? How the wheel done turned? Let me get my ass out of the road before I get fucking hit. Bitch, please believe your ass is on the motherfucking docky and I'm coming for your insurance, bitch. Stay tuned for that. Okay. Y'all got that part right. Alright. Catch a load of this. Roll that second clip. Y'all, I don't know if y'all can see me right now. What the fuck is my shoes? Y'all just seen I recorded earlier that my car was on the side of the road, right? Somebody just hit it again. Oh, I got curlers all in my head. I was, I was getting ready for this damn video, man. Oh, yeah, I'll be right back. believe this shit bro they still sitting outside of my shit this this is crazy bro I had to walk off from the ass I know they're gonna come back after this happens to people it, it put a pause on a lot of shit obviously <laughs> that vegan shit is off the chain bitch just eggplant tastes just like me <clears throat> y'all know how much I love my meat <clears throat> mm. 
But that's crazy, man. My car got hit twice in the same spot. All I know is, bitch, this insurance company is got to pay me some coins, girl. Mm -hmm. I've been riding around in this rental about two weeks now. Y'all, this is the rental that they gave me. Boy, I don't know who the hell over here. This is the buy alley to my place, y'all, but this is my rental. Which I ain't nothing compared to my damn car. I miss my car. Ain't nothing special, child. I don't know if y'all can really see up in there. Nothing special. But I'm going through this whole insurance process claim, whatever the fuck they want to call it. But I'm going to miss my car, man. Let me take y'all out here real quick to get a last look at my car before they tore it away. Because St. Pete Police already threatened me to my son. The car is considered abandoned. Because I've been waiting for them to come tow it. And they still haven't yet. And they done threatened me with this bullshit. So, bitch, I place a, a sign in the door, which we gonna see. As you can see, they place it outside with the paper and shit, but I, I ain't got the keys right now. They're in the car. Insurance claim. See that little thing right there? That's what they put on my car. Melanie, girl. And this whole process is going through her insurance, your insurance, if you watching this right now. I don't know what you was doing that night with them two boys. But your insurance gonna be fucked up from here on out, girl. Hmm. You know, hopefully I get me a brand new car. You know, I hope the best for you, girl. I'm pretty sure you said or think the, the same, you know. Cause she did apologize or whatever, but bitch. Y'all, this shit is crazy. I gotta get the hell out of this damn apartment. I really do. And I wanna give a special shout out to my friends, my family, and my bosses and my coworkers at work. That's been helping me get to work. You know, when I didn't have a way, I got a way not to eat. Cause y'all know me, bitch, I don't like to depend on nobody. But, for those of y'all that's been helping me through all this bullshit, man, I appreciate that shit, man. Because it's hard out here for a nigga. I'm trying not to clink as much on this damn plate, y'all. Y'all, all that, huh? Mm -hmm. My car got hit twice, bro. I can't believe that shit. And y'all best believe this motherfucker's just on the docket. Bitch, I was out there while they was giving the dude his sobriety test and shit. What the fuck they saying? Man, why you gotta come bring your scooter riding ass through here, bitch? Go sit the fuck down before your ass get hit, bitch. Look at this bitch. I'm trying to be still, y'all. My nerves are shot, bitch. I was just about to get ready to shoot my damn mukbang and shit and this shit fucking happen. Yo, I got to move.
I got to move. This area is not safe. This bitch done walked the line, fell that. I don't know what the fuck she got him doing now. Look at him. I ain't worried about it. I got the police report number and all that shit, girl. That's a hot ass mess. He clearly drunk, bitch. She keeps talking about something. It's funny, you know that. Y'all better take his cracker ass to jail. I know that much.
to CJ these chambers. Okay? In that order. All rise! Chef Judge Drizzle's courtroom is now in session. Thank you, Beth. Strictly for entertainment purposes only. No shade, no read, just ain't obvious. So, with that being said, first of all, knock it. This is the case of Cracker Club hate no nigga but love. Let's get on the hook. Word at the buffet. Ian, the white Sherman Clump, the dumb one, not the scientific, smart African American. <laughs> Eddie Murphy played. In the movie. Has been charged with the murder of Barry Washington Jr. Let's be going on. Police arrested Ian Clumpy Body Ass McKenzie at his raggedy ass home in Redmond, Oregon. Baby, please roll that clip. At a downtown Bend news conference tonight, Deschutes County DA John Hummel announced a grand jury indicted Ian Cranston on second degree murder and other charges in the recent downtown Bend fatal shooting. 22-year-old Barry Washington Jr. was fatally shot in the early morning hours of September 19th. Cranston's being charged with murder in the second degree, first and second degree manslaughter, assault in the first degree, and two counts of unlawful use of a weapon. Hummel says he spoke with Barry Washington's mother minutes before announcing the charges. Two minutes before I walked down here, I was on the phone with Barry's mother, LaWanda Robinson. I informed LaWanda of the decision made by the grand jury. I express my condolences to her and her family as they continue to grieve the loss of Barry. Um, based on what I told her, she, she thanked God. That's what she said to me. Thank God. There's a reckoning with race that needs to happen in Central Oregon. And it needs to happen now. To the hundreds of people who have been advocating on behalf of Barry and his family, thank you. Keep it up. I see you and I respect you. Our community needs you. Know this, justice will be done in this case. Soon after a grand jury returned with an indictment on six charges, second degree murder, first and second degree manslaughter, first degree assault, and two counts of unlawful use of a deadly weapon. Did they charge him for being a sloppy racist ass pig that's hating on my African American fine brother? <laughs> Barry Washington Jr. was unarmed at the time of his death. The two men did not know each other until the night of the shooting when Barry approached his girlfriend, Allison Butler. First of all, to approach a female named Allison Butler, hmm, y'all already know any man besides myself. <laughs> will seduce or submit to anything that meets a certain desire or willing to pay for that nigga. The shooting sparked an outrage among racial justice advocates in Bend, a city where more, more than 90% of the residents are pasty pilgrim white and gun violence in the downtown area is rare. Why is this shit so rare when it comes to white people? This day racist ass don't look rare, they look raw. Spore rotten ass racist Pig, pink ass swine. Let's speak on all. I'm order for your big fat nasty racist ass scum of the earth to be thrown into a septic tank of 2,000 degrees boiling water, bitch. Hot water, dry all. And that all. Pay out for cost finding fees, fat bastard. 
Okay, slow, that's good. You try to stay out of order. Don't get scared and timid when we start retaliating on that ass. Don't bring that shit in my courtroom. I don't want to hit. I don't want to hit in that up. Next one, that get. This is the case of when you seriously need your ass whooped. Let's get them up. Word at recess. Arlington, Texas police got a call that there was a shooting at Timberland High School. The shooting was not a random attack. Police were informed that a fight occurred in the classroom before the teenager began shooting. Baby, can you please roll that clip, please? I need to see that. Breaking developments at school shooting authorities racing to the scene in Arlington, Texas, outside Dallas. This time at Timberview High School, the gunfire ringing out early this morning. One of the victims shot a young English teacher. He is 25 years old. Tonight, he's in the hospital, a 15-year-old in the hospital, too, who had been in critical condition, now recovering in the ICU. Word of an active shooter reaching police just after 9 this morning, armed officers running inside. The suspect quickly identified as an 18-year-old student at the school fleeing in a car, triggering a massive hunt and a warning that he was armed and dangerous. Students and teachers barricading themselves with doors and chairs and desks and behind those doors huddling there in the dark. Outside a massive law enforcement response securing the school, getting the injured medical help. Law enforcement rushing to his home nearby. They did not find him there. Tonight, after searching for hours, the gunman turning himself in. And what we've now learned, ABC's Marcus Moore leading us off here from Texas tonight. Tonight, a shooting at this Arlington, Texas high school, leaving four people hurt. This is not a random act of violence. This is not somebody attacking our schools. Officials saying it all started around 9.15 this morning. Authorities now reviewing videos posted to social media appearing to show a fight. We believe right now, preliminary, that it was a student that got into a fight and drew a weapon. Are you asking? About six shots, six, seven shots, back to back. This is something you all have done drills on. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, we do drills on all the time, so we knew what to do once we heard lockdown. Because usually they say, usually they let us know it's a drill. But they said lockdown, lockdown, so we knew it was in our drill. Police identifying the suspect as 18-year-old Timothy George Simpkins, a Timberview High School student who turned himself in after an hours-long manhunt. Students sheltering in place. Teacher Dale Topham was just down the hall with his students, and together they barricaded the door. When they realized it was shooting. There was no hesitation, no confusion, no chaos. They just immediately sprang into action. One 25-year-old teacher and three teenage students were wounded during the shooting. Three of them taken to the hospital and expected to be okay. As an all-out manhunt for Simpkins began, law enforcement swarming his house with guns drawn. But he wasn't there. Officials out with a warning. That this person is considered to be armed and dangerous. As the lockdown was lifted at the high school, a steady stream of students walking out in a single file. And a now familiar scene tonight. Worried parents waiting to be reunited with their children. This is the fifth school shooting in the past week. This mom saying that she and her son had discussed school shootings and prepared for this day. To know that the shooting was right next to his class, bullets fly everywhere. In the words of John Witherspoon, you kids today ain't nothing but punks. Sissified. So quick to pick up a gun. And I thought I was the sissy. I don't shoot, but I damn sure I'll throw something at your head. You win some, you lose some. But we're all living to fight another day. The younger generation needs to better bringing up and more and more authority in their life. And not being a punk ass bitch to be quick to grab guns after their ass got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> Timothy weak ass Simpkins, I'm ordered for your ass to get completely naked, soak in a tub of warm water, and then prepare to get the ass full of your life, nigga. Like Denzel Washington and Glory. <laughs> Then after your ass will and sprinkle your welts with some fresh lemon juice and sea salt to heal your ass up in that oven. <laughs> Tell your mammy and pepper to pay our co cost fines and fees, nigga, with their non tender ass. Because <laughs> if they were a tender bitch, they would have been told your ass up thinking about picking up a damn gun, nigga. <laughs> Let's be gonna order that is the order. <laughs> hey, Tom, let's get I'm black ass nigga, you know you was out of That'd be glad you ain't mine. You wouldn't even thought about picking up no. <laughs> Next up, the doctor. This is.
is the case with what well, we already knew that much. Let's go. Okay. Word in the swamp. The body of Brian Laundrie has been found and identified and is now said that no cause of death was determined and the remains of Brian have been sent to an anthropologist for further evaluation. Baby, can you please roll that clip? The search for Brian Laundry is over, but the search for answers about his death remain. Tonight, the nature reserve where search teams made the grim discovery now open to the public after being closed for a month. This little tiny little park here in Northport, Florida, uh, you know, who would have thought that uh, this kind of frenzy would be generated? Cameras getting a close look at the scene for the first time, seeing how dense the woods are and how wet the area is. Laundry's remains were found in this area deep in the reserve that was recently underwater. Much of the reserve is untamed swamp, home to alligators, snakes, and wild pigs. While the FBI says dental records confirm Laundry's identity, more information is needed from his remains, which include a portion of a human skull to determine exactly how the 23-year-old died. After a medical examiner was unable to determine cause of death, the Laundry family attorney tells NBC News the remains were sent to an anthropologist for further evaluation. The anthropologist specializes in analyzing hard tissues such as bones. Forensic pathologist Dr. Priya Banerjee says investigators will likely use x-rays on the remains, searching for anomalies and fractures or any objects within the bone. But she says determining a cause of death will be a challenge. I don't envy my colleagues. All the tissues are no longer there. And if there were some sort of trauma, you may not see it. It's like you can't complete a puzzle if you're missing many pieces. Authorities began a massive manhunt for Laundry after his fiance, Gabby Petito, went missing in August. Laundry named a person of interest in her murder after her remains were found in a Wyoming national park. At Laundry's parents' home today, a request for privacy. Thank you. Kitty joins me now. Kitty, you're getting a close up look inside the reserve. How severe are the conditions there? Well, Jose, the conditions are quite extreme. And while we know Brian Laundry was an experienced survivalist, the heat here, the wildlife, as well as the flooding, these would be difficult circumstances for anyone to endure over a long period of time. Jose? Word on the curb to his family, that is, Brian's family, has been acting kind of shady about Brian's disappearance. Did y'all bitches kill these children? Cause y'all white motherfuckers seem to think that y'all can get away with everything. Hmm. We the people will continue to watch. And when all that whiteness comes through the dark, best believe that it's time for that white to turn dark. AKA six feet under with them damn children. To be continued. Next one, I'm not good. This is the case of Dumb and Dumb, let's be going on. Word at the bus stop, two bitches that collided with Chef Andre Maxwell's brand new Ford Fusion that was recently totaled are both under investigations with insurance claims filed both of them by Chef Andre Maxwell himself. Kind of your business, Chef. Melanie 80 was the first collider that totaled the vehicle in the first place. You the dumb bitch. At 2.36 a.m. October 8th, Chef Andre had awakened in the night to go use the restroom. He describes hearing the sound of a boom. He then rushes to the window, veering into the street of 1st Avenue North, which is a one-way street, and sees Melanie with two other men looking at my car's damage. Blah, 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 blah. Long story short, that bitch was held accountable. And that's why the rent I have is being financially handled through her insurance. Which it should. She could have been no more older than 26 years old. Well, I tell you what, Melanie, I appreciate the fact you looked at me in my beautiful eyes and apologized. But I'm gonna apologize to you too, sweetheart. From the bottom of my heart, bitch, you out of order. And your insurance rate is gonna be fucking ridiculous once I'm done with it, bitch, in that order. Now, the vehicle was waiting to be towed to the salvage yard. This is where the next collision shortly happened thereafter. At 7.53 on October 23rd, Beer Barely Bad Body, fat named dude named Yannis Gerlis, whatever the fuck his name is, a fucking drunk, collided a second time with Chef Andre Maxwell's vehicle. Chef Andre Maxwell says he was filming for his YouTube video at 7.51 
And during that time, he hears a familiar sound, which was the drunken Dodge pickup pig smelly Yannis stinking ass Grizz. Grizz is his last name now. Chef Andre collected plenty of video and pictures and talked to a fine ass cop who took very good care of him. Even gave him a ride to the stop. Though he had a rental. For me to know and you not to hold. In that order. Anyway, yeah, his fat ass was clearly jumping in the pool of brown and failed the test required when suspected of drinking. Chef Andre Maxwell has also filed a claim against his insurance as well, which he should. And also wants him prosecuted. I got you, Chef. I'm gonna order for both of y'all insurance claims to pay Chef Andre Maxwell in the sum of $15,000 for his lost vehicle, wages, stress, disruption in his life, and YouTube creation. Mr. Maxwell, there will be no taxes taken out. I'm gonna order for Milani, dick riding, car totaling ass, never to be charged with a cheap ass insurance rate ever again in her life. <laughs> Bitch, you want PIP coverage? 5,000 a month. If your non driver ass ever wants to caress or crash with another one, hope. <laughs> yeah, it's your big clumpy body ass smacks, bitch. Just eat yourself to death and crash again, you drunk bitch. That is that one. <laughs> Insurance claims, pay off all cost fines and fees. Case closed, man. I'm in the money. I'm in the money. An African American brother is seeking justice after a traffic stop turned unnecessarily violent in September. Bailiff, please. Tonight's disturbing video showing police dragging a black paraplegic man from his car during a traffic stop in Ohio. And that man now accusing the Dayton Police Department of racial profiling and unlawful arrest in a complaint with the NAACP. Athena Jones is out front. They dragged me to their vehicle. Like a dog, like trash, like you take out trash. The video is difficult to watch. Dayton, Ohio police pulling a black paraplegic man from a car during a traffic stop last month. Thirty-nine-year-old Clifford Owens be launched a complaint with the NAACP. He accuses police of profiling, unlawful arrest, illegal search and seizure, and failing to read him his rights before taking him to jail. <laughs> police say they stopped Owensby after seeing him leave a suspected drug house. And based on that sighting and Owensby's past history of felony drug and weapons possession charges, officers called for a narcotics detection canine unit, a drug sniffing dog, to check the vehicle. Department policy requires occupants exit the vehicle first. The nearly 12-minute police body camera video shows an officer pulling Owensby over and ordering him out of the car. The officer says several times he will help Owensby out of the car. Owensby declines, saying he will call someone he knows to come help him. Throughout the September 30th incident, Owensby repeatedly asked the officer to call a superior to the scene. The officer says he will do so, but Owensby must get out of the car first. Seconds later, a struggle ensues as two officers forcibly remove Owensby, at one point pulling him by his hair. <laughs> Dean Police Major Brian Johns said officers retrieved a bag from Owensby's vehicle containing about $22,000 in cash. Owensby said Sunday the money was his savings and that no weapons or drugs were found in the search. He was not charged with any drug related offense. Clifford, what was going through your head when this happened, when they pulled you out of the car? Um, I was in fear of my life. Um, 
all I could do was just close my eyes and grab the steering wheel and, and, and I prayed to God in my head to, you know, make sure that it didn't go the way that it went and they snatched me out of the vehicle by my hair and I don't know, it just, it's a constant reminder every day, you know, and I, I, I can't get past the fact that, you know, I've been humiliated like that and they would do anyone like that, treat any citizens of Dayton, Ohio or anywhere else like that. Now this is some real bullshit. No discussion needed. I'm gonna order for the pigs involved to have their legs cut off and then handcuff their ass to the back of a semi and drag the hell out of their ass across the hot ass pavement of Highway 275 until they are no more in that off. <laughs> Pay our call cost fines and fees. Case closed, next case. <laughs> next on the docket, this is the case of again, really bitch, let's put them off. Word at Mr. and Mrs. Crab, LaJoya, AKA Midnight, black cat running across the street while driving, dark, raven, ebony, sable, jet black, dusky, inky, pitch dark black, ocean abyss ass safari, Henderson, was caught in the act of allegedly dining and trying to ditch our baby cousin's party. My dog was throwing for her. Midnight, you out of order? LaJoya flaw ass almost ordered $300 in food and left the remaining party, aka the family, with the fucking bill. Now I'ma just say this is why Chef Andre and the majority don't fuck with LaJoya. You steals, bitch! Most African American families always got a member that steals. And she just so happened to be one. And Uncle Malo. But at least Uncle Marlo doesn't steal from his family, bitch. He's stealing from them crackers. And just like you stole from me all them years ago, you still ain't learned or stopped. Steal from them niggas you be hunching. Or try to even steal from your mama or your daddy. And see what happens. Or try me again and we'll definitely see what happens. You seriously need to get your shit together, girl. Until then, I don't want you around me or my dog with your petty non-trusting ass. Non-trusting, family disoriented. Easy up from Friday. I'm gonna order for your jet black ass to be thrown in some quicksand. That way you can reach for something other than reaching for it and taking your family's hard-earned shit. And for creating badass fucking memories, bitch, for the family and your loved ones. Always remember about jet life, non-trusting, supposed to be family, a role model to your kids, but a skid mark in the kids' draws. <laughs> From here on out, bitch, you was canceled in that off. <laughs> Pay off court costs, fines, and fees, since you got so much money. Not! <laughs> case closed, next case. Court is adjourned. Now y'all, some of these cases may have been old, but y'all had been um, pre-written my uh, docket, so it is what it is. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to CJD's Chambers segment this week. Um, y'all comment down below. If y'all want some cases heard on um, the docket, send them to either my email, my Facebook, uh, Instagram, or if you know me personally, by phone number. And also, y'all got a TikTok now. I'll uh, make sure I put that up as well. But until next time, y'all, y'all take care of y'all selves and stay out of trouble, okay? And like I always say, laugh this guy's gift in this trouble ass world. Till next time, keep laughing. Case closed, next case. That is the art. Hey, y'all, call cost five speed. Case closed, next case. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. I want to give a special shout out to all my new subscribers, my current subscribers that's been there from Jump Street, y'all. I know I've been gone for a long time, but as y'all can see, I've been through a lot the past month, and uh, I plan on continuing to do what I do, staying strong, and producing these videos, y'all. But uh, y'all also stay tuned to my next video, because I plan on doing a vlog as far as like buying me a new car and stuff. Cause uh, you know I I should be expecting a check here soon, um, you know, being that it's the end of the claims and stuff, y'all. 
I thank y'all so much for tuning in. Thank you so much to my new subscribers. I hope y'all enjoy my content. Shout out to all my friends and family, everybody that has, that's been helping me get through all this bullshit, man. I love you guys so much. And uh, y'all comment, share, like, and subscribe. And make sure y'all turn y'all bell notification on next time y'all know I drop a video. Also, y'all, like Chef Judge said, if y'all have any case y'all want her, send them to the email, Facebook, Instagram, if you know them personally, uh, phone number. But y'all, yeah, I'm finna get ready to get up out of here. I'm in the process of cooking me some dinner. Also, y'all, check out my TikTok, because I plan on putting up constant videos on there, you know, as far as YouTube or whatever. But anyways, guys, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for all those that's been checking on me throughout this time. It's been hard. You know, but I'm pushing through y'all. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. And like I always say, in the meantime, y'all behave, stay prayed up, and eat like nobody's watching.